Okay, thank you very much, Tim. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sharon Jones. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today representing Strand Millis University College and grateful for the opportunity to join my colleagues Ian and Kieran um, and distinguished guests at this very important and timely seminar focusing on language in education as part of the Knowledge Exchange Seminar Series. Today I'll be addressing the issue of languages in primary schools in Northern Ireland, drawing and research findings from uh, outlined in the review of current primary languages in Northern Ireland uh, report that we published earlier this year. The full report is accessible online. I've included a link to that on the final slide, so that should be in your packs, and I hope you enjoy reading it in full. Uh, as Tim mentioned in his introduction, this is a time of some concern and vulnerability in language education across the UK as a whole and in Northern Ireland. With the decline in uptake in languages generally at GCSE and beyond, and the diminution and even demise of languages departments in some of our universities. All this is playing out before us at a juncture in history when arguably language skills could be crucial. The recently published British Council report Languages for the Future just a couple of weeks ago was published and this highlights the predicament that we're in and offers guidance as to how we might prioritise as we move forward towards Brexit and beyond. There are uh, strong arguments in favour of learning new languages. For Northern Ireland currently, in addition to the cognitive and health benefits documented in research, the enhanced cultural understanding and tolerance that language learning offers is surely significant given our troubled recent past the increasingly multilingual and multicultural nature of many of our schools and classrooms, and the risks of racially related bullying. The advantages language skills bring to a regional or national economy is a further compelling reason for the inclusion of language learning on the curriculum in Northern Ireland across all educational phases. There are indeed compelling arguments for starting to learn a new language before post-primary education begins. Indeed, in many parts of the world, the first exposure to learning a new language is, takes place in the kindergarten. And the majority of our un incoming Erasmus and international students at Stramilis University College, for example, have been successful English language learners since preschool. And the levels of their confidence and proficiency as undergraduates are impressive. So even if the jury is out as to precisely when second language learning should begin, practice makes perfect. And creative and careful approaches to language learning from early childhood can reap dividends in terms of positive attitudes to later learning experiences and in the development of learner confidence. <clears throat> Increasingly, one of the most important words in the educational lexicon for me is the word opportunity. Imagine for a moment with me that you are a 10 year old child in England. By law, since 2014, you will have had the opportunity to learn an additional language. Maybe Spanish, Mandarin, French, Arabic or German. Or imagine you lived a bit further north, in Glasgow or Aberdeen, Scotland. Here, as a 10-year-old, you will have, by law, had the opportunity to experience learning two languages as well as your own. So the cognitive and intercultural benefits of this educational opportunity will have been made yours, no matter how poor or wealthy your family. Now, imagine you are a similar 10-year-old child in Northern Ireland. <clears throat> Here, since the publication of the Northern Ireland Languages Strategy in 2012, there have been major discussions around language-related issues, as we know. And yet, by law, you, in your imaginary shoes as a child in a primary school in Northern Ireland, are not entitled, by law, to learn a new language. If you happen to find yourself in a school with a leadership that understands and espouses the vision of the benefits of learning a new language, you may enjoy <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> some very good provision. 
I know some primary schools where children can learn Spanish and Mandarin, say, all the way through their language learning, uh, their primary school journey. <clears throat> Thank you so much. But if you happen to go find yourself in a different school, not very far away from the first one, you may find no such opportunity open to you. If your parents could have afforded to pay for, and chose to do so, the increasing luxury range of privately owned commercial language learning clubs, francophone toddlers or mini Mandarin speakers or happy little hispanists, perhaps, you may have struck lucky. If not, the odds are that when you start at school, you will automatically have fallen behind your counterparts, not only in Scotland and England, but also in Europe, China and beyond. Importantly, you may not, later in life, be able to compete for, as one of the primary school pupils we heard from in our study so very eloquently put it, a worldwide job. Novelist Edmund Duval, who wrote the wonderful book The Hair with Amber Eyes, said that with languages you can move from one social situation to the other. With languages you are at home anywhere. If we deny our children the opportunity to learn a new language, we fail to prepare them to move socially with ease. And if, as Wittgenstein put it, our language is the limit of our world, by perpetuating generations of monolingual children in Northern Ireland, we are granting them a narrow, diminished and impoverished vision of the world. And so to our research. Commissioned by the Northern Ireland Languages Council and led by a team of language and primary education specialists from Stranmills University College, this review sought to evaluate the Primary Modern Languages Programme, PMLP, for which funding was cut in 2015, as well as mapping provision for learning a new language in primary schools in Northern Ireland beyond and outside this programme. Based on our findings, we made a number of recommendations and I want to consider these with you today. In order to address our research questions as inclusively as possible, we engaged with all primary school types in Northern Ireland. We sought the views of principals and teachers in some 101 schools via an online survey and we engaged in in-depth, semi-structured interviews with principals and teachers in eight schools. Recognising the importance of the views of children and their right to freely express their views about all matters affecting them, we surveyed a sample of over 100 Key Stage 2 pupils in primary schools and carried out pupil focus groups with 24 pupils in four schools. So what did we find? There was firstly a consensus among school principals and teachers in this study that learning a new language is important, valuable and enjoyable in the context of primary schools in Northern Ireland. It was agreed that an early start seemed advantageous and that levels of motivation in pupils are high and that correlates with what I see in primary classrooms uh, in my role as lecturer of education with uh, modern languages at Stramilis. Interestingly, principals told us that offering a language seemed to raise a school's profile in the community and that might suggest that parents too saw that it was a valuable opportunity for their children. But perhaps most importantly of all, um, there was agreement from principals and teachers that the opportunity for all children to learn a new language in Northern Ireland primary schools should be made statutory in Northern Ireland. We also find that there was a range of languages currently being taught in, in primary schools across Northern Ireland. Um, in some schools, children have the privilege of learning Irish, Polish, German, Mandarin Chinese, uh, but the two most frequently taught were Spanish and French. However, we noted a lack of consistency in terms of how those languages were being taught and at which key stage um, provision was delivered. And there was a similar lack of consistency in terms of the time allocated each week to learning the language. And in terms of assessment, 
It was often either absent or um, very light touch. Principals and teachers told us about partnership opportunities um, that were valuable and that helped them to promote or support uh, language learning in schools, but they did report that applications for these took a lot of time and could actually put them off applying in the first place. Importantly, principals and teachers told us that they believed the most effective person to teach a new language in the primary classroom is the qualified primary classroom teacher. Um, this, uh, it was agreed by principals and teachers, was the most versatile model in that the class teacher knows their in individual pupils and can plan uh, teaching and learning to meet their individual <coughs> needs. So principals and teachers called for capacity building um, to develop provision, both in terms of specialist provision to equip new teachers with the necessary linguistic and pedagogical skills through initial teacher education and also through uh, continuing prof professional development opportunities. Now we turn to um, some of the most significant voices in this discussion, the primary pupils themselves. We were aware of the vital importance of the voice of the child and of children's rights to express their issues on, uh, sorry, express their views on issues affecting their lives. Um, so we were very keen to seek their views. And what we found was that primary school pupils in Northern Ireland understand the benefits of languages and they enjoy the challenge of learning them. And in fact, they want more challenge. Uh, one of the pupils said, I'd like to do more advanced things. Um, and they also want everybody to have an equal opportunity in every school. Uh, they want learning to be well planned and they know when it's not. And they made that clear. Um, they also want to experience continuity between key phases. So one child told us, we used to learn Spanish in P4, but I don't know why we stopped. And they also talked about the transition from primary to post-primary schools um, that we will consider later. Many of our pupils in Northern Ireland prefer French and Spanish, but they also enjoyed or wanted to learn a vast range of languages. So they included the range from Irish, German, Polish, Japanese, Russian, Mandarin Chinese, and last but not least, ancient Greek. One boy wanted to learn Chinese and ancient Greek, he said. His friend answered, ancient Greek? He's trying to outdo you. No, said the boy, it's because I've been reading the horrible history books. <laughs> In light of what we find in our research study, uh, we make the following proposals. First and foremost, we argue for the inclusion of learning a new language as a statutory element of the Northern Ireland curriculum. A review of a curriculum in place since 2007 is surely timely, and given the economic and cultural benefits of language learning, it must be a priority. Secondly, we argue that future success in the teaching and learning of languages in the primary classrooms lies in the capable hands of talented linguists who are also primary classroom teachers. I am delighted that a number of these student teachers from Stramalis University College have joined us today and given of their time to be here. Uh, you might recognize a few familiar faces on the slide, perhaps. These students have developed their language skills through A-level and post A level study, and some have taken the opportunity to consolidate the, their skills through international study placements, spending a semester abroad. Currently, these students take an optional final year primary languages module, teaching their language on a weekly basis in local primary schools <coughs> under my supervision as module coordinator. I can tell you that their work in the classroom is inspiring, and we would like to see this program develop in order to reach more children more effectively. We also argue that funded research be commissioned to explore innovative cross-curricular teaching and learning approaches in the context of Northern Ireland, such as content language integrated learning, teaching primary science, say, through German or Spanish or Mandarin Chinese, for example. And finally, we highlight the need for more effective area-based planning to promote the successful transition of young linguists from primary to post-primary schools, and I know that Ian will look at that more closely in his talk. 
I'm not sure how many people here are Michael Gove fans, but he got one thing right when he said this. Learning a foreign language and the culture that goes with it is one of the most useful things we can do to broaden the empathy and imaginative sympathy and cultural outlook of children. All of our children and young people in Northern Ireland deserve the opportunity to develop a healthy cultural outlook. The opportunity to enjoy learning about new places and new people and different ways of communicating. The opportunity to compete for that worldwide job. According to Jean Piaget, the principal goal of education in schools should be creating men and women who are capable of doing new things, not simply repeating what other generations have done. Perhaps now is the time to make a change in the primary curriculum in Northern Ireland, to open up opportunities for language learning for all children in all of our primary schools, and a healthier, more tolerant and more prosperous future. Thank you. Thank you.